joined us. That was not Randy Backman back in, uh, in uh, what month is this? Back in uh, June, at the end of June, uh, at the concert you saw at the carnival. That was the sound check, but still it was some blistering footage of four-wheel drive, and the guy is a legend, and he's still got it and everything. Welcome to Hard Rock Heroes, Randy Backman. Thank you. Great to be here. Okay, uh, let's start with some catching up here. Um, now, BTO had gotten back together several years back. You did some touring, you put out some new material, but now in the past year, you have left BTO again. You've started this new band, Backman, with some new guys. Uh, what made you decide to start this new band? I just had a, a bunch of new material. I had sent out demo tapes to other bands to record my songs. Uh, Stray Cats did one of my tunes. A band called uh, Dangerous Toys did another couple. And uh, no big hits or anything, but you know, I was at least getting my songs done. And my tape got into the hands of some A&R people at record labels and they offered me a couple of different deals. And I thought, wow, I'm, I can get a, a deal out of this. And gee, I can do my own album. And I had enough material, I had about 40 songs. So it was just a logical thing of me saying, yes, I really, I think I can make a statement and uh, um, I can tour Canada and I'd be really happy to achieve like what a Tom Cochran did and have a body of workout, you know, four, five, six, eight, ten albums and just tour Canada and the, and the States and uh, just got a release in Germany, was over there doing a bunch of TV shows that will be uh, shown in the middle of July. They're very slow in Germany, like you go there and do live TV, then they edit and everything comes in a whole month later. So our release is about a, a week old there in Germany and doing very well. And we go back in October and do a massive big tour of, of Germany where we get all the airplay and everything. So things are going really uh, nicely. I'm really thrilled with the, uh, the way the album turned out. It was kind of a bit of self-indulgence. I did everything I wanted to do with old guitars and amplifiers and I was very happy with the sound. And I've got really good uh, incredible critical acclaim for the first time in my life on a project I've done. I mean, every critic has called me almost personally or written something very nice saying that they're really blown away by it and that it's really a great new uh, chapter in, a, in a, my career. And uh, radio's been very kind to me and now we're just this is the first beginning of ra basically the Prairie Town Tour. I did Thunder Bay Exhibition last night and my dream come true, the Red River X tonight. I wanted to play here growing up for many, many years in Winnipeg. So. So now that the album Any Road is, is so successful, does that mean this is permanently finished with you and BTO, that this is your band now, Backman? Probably. BTO has another member, uh, Randy Murray, who's uh, a, you know, really a great guitar player, singer, and they're, they're touring the country this summer, as they did last summer when I was doing the album. So we've kind of, we've gone our own ways, and uh, I'm very happy with my way, so... Uh, any Road generally sounds like uh, vintage Randy Backman to me. It sounds like great workman like rock and roll. Was it a conscious decision to keep on in sort of the same direction, similar direction that BTO had? Or was it just a matter of, hey, I wrote some great songs, I want to record them? Yes to all of those. Uh, I had written a bunch of songs and so they were somewhat different, different subject matter, but basically the bulk was what I did the best and that was with uh, you know, the late, late 60s with the Guess Who and the early 70s with BTO. I just relaxed and did that and I, and I figured I don't care if people say that overworked and underpaid sounds like like a BTO playing behind the Guess Who because that's what they've said because it's got harmony in it, you know. And um, I just wanted to do what I wanted to do and uh, basically please myself. So, I mean, there is quite a bit of, I guess, my identity that was in BTO and the Guess Who there. But I've also had some really great comments on what people see as, as a new identity as far as me singing, uh, singing an entire album myself. Um, and uh, I really concentrated on the lyrics this time because I was, I was doing all the singing. Uh, I know for a fact I'm not really a great singer. I never started out to be a singer. Just really a guitar player who writes songs. So I concentrated a lot on the lyrics to help me get the songs over. And consequently, uh, with, with such a concentration on the lyrics, I found I was singing differently. I was singing, I was enunciating more, the words more, and I was doing it more in, in a talking voice. So a lot of the album has kind of a, a talking uh, voice, which people have compared to Robbie Robertson and Mark Knopfler, but I did it way back in the Guess Who and Rock Is My Life in 73 on, on uh, and Welcome right. Home. There was that kind of thing where I talked part of the song and then sang the rest. So it's not, not like I was copying someone, it's just that I fell into that because of just the way the songs were. 
And of course, overworked and underpaid, we played that on the back on the June 18th show, if you remember, because you've been watching every single Hard Rock Heroes, right? But anyway, you're on, you're on an independent label now, and I'm curious as to the distribution. You mentioned the album is out in Germany now. Uh, is there interest in the States? Is it out in America? Is there e even some kind of interest because Neil Young is in the first video for Prairie Town? We have a lot of interest in the States. Uh, I could have had a, an obligatory release from Sony in the States, and I didn't want it. You know, I don't want guys to say, oh, you're at Sony in Canada, it's doing well. Sure, we'll release it here. I want guys banging down the door saying, Working. we're independent, we're only three guys, but we'll bust our butts doing it and we'll rack our brains trying to make, you know, I want a team effort going. And uh, I've had several calls like that. My lawyers are sorting them out now. I'm just so busy doing the Canadian tour now. This is going to take us right till the middle of September and then a few weeks off and then we go to Germany that I'd really um, I don't even c care to worry about the United States now and it's it's happening in its own sweet time which is great by the time we get our US deal uh, all in place because it's a whole different set of contracts and different parameters that you're dealing with there it'll probably be the late fall and I'll be real happy to contend with the states then because up to now Canada and Germany and the UK and, uh, and Australia we're just finalizing those record deals now and then I go over with the band we do some TV we do some press come home and then go back a month or so later for the payoff gigs which is what we're doing now in Canada we did kind of a lot of promo in uh, March and April doing the Ralph Ben Murgy show and much on the mountain did a lot of uh, exposure for the band and uh, now we're back playing for masses of people and and making some money because in the beginning any project is a lose money situation mm -hmm. so uh, everything balances out and I'm really happy so I think the states will fall into place next year or late this year has there been any how should I say it um, just any talk uh, simply the word of mouth as to Neil Young being in this video and you know it's kind of a, a roundabout sort of way uh, people are, are you know b people in the biz are hearing about this this thing going on up in Canada and Neil Young is in your new video and hey what's going on and all that well, I, I try to stress to a lot of people, like I'll go to a gig and they'll say, is Neil coming tonight? I'll say, no, Neil's in Germany right now with Booker T and the MGs. <coughs> I just talked to them a few days ago. <coughs> and uh, he and I do plan to do something in the future. It's just that my future is a little indefinite. This, plugging this album will probably go on for another year, year and a half, just because we've staggered the releases around the world because I don't want to spend a whole lot of time away from my home studio and my family. So even though we're doing the Prairie Town Tour now, it's like a couple of weekends, two weeks off, a couple of weeks on, a couple of weeks off, until the end of the year. And that's, that's why I think I'm content with this project. Nobody's really forcing me to work. I look at a situation, if it looks really good, and um, it's really a good bunch of people and good gigs, we go out and do them. Okay, let's talk about Prairie Town. This is destined to be a legendary Randy Bachman song and, of course, probably Winnipeg's theme song. Um, what kind of response have you gotten from Winnipeggers on this song, and especially on the chorus where it goes, Portage and Main 50 below? Has anyone not gotten the tongue-in-cheek you know, reference to that? And are, Has any, anyone been offended from Winnipeg, you know? I no, hope not. No, as a matter of fact, I've had uh, most people from Winnipeg, and I see them a lot in airports and airplanes and restaurants, because they're all over Canada. Uh, they might be living somewhere else, but in, in their hearts, they're still Winnipeggers. They would yell to me on the street and airplane, I like the slow version. Oh, I like the fast version, because there was a competition for a while, and I did get a lot of great airplay. Some stations would only, the format would only allow them to play the slow version, and other ones the fast version. So it was a great single for me to kick, to kick off, and I really look forward to this evening in Winnipeg, because we did the song last night in Thunder Bay, which was our first start at the Edge of the Prairies tour, at their exhibition last night, and in the middle of Prairie Town, we just stopped playing. And we were doing the fast version which is like the, the kick rock one. And uh, we started to play the slow one and just to get it going and we stopped. And I said, now do you want to sing this line? And people in Thunder Bay sang that second line. Then he went to play for a while in Thunder Bay. And they, uh, every time they'd sing it, they'd cheer for themselves. So they sang that verse three times and the chorus. And it was really very cool. So I look forward to uh, a similar thing tonight in Winnipeg because it is kind of a, an anthem that I wrote just on a little